All right, you legends. My brother and I are rolling out. We're on Flintwich Drive. Yeah. And it's supposed to rain. It's not raining right now. It's just overcast. But we're gonna get some clips for you all. It should be interesting. We're doing a probably slightly shorter ride. We got a time window, so maybe five and a half hours, but uh, we're going out near the forest area. We'll see. Just enjoying today. Yeah. yeah. All right. There we go. Okay, On this ride, Paul and I left Northampton. It was forecasted to be a rainy day, but really it just stayed cool and a little damp. We rode out on Sterling Ridge, we met Mo, we went down to the Ashland YMCA with him to see if anybody was there. But we ended up letting him go, that's on 1488 there. We went into Karen, into that neighborhood, there are a lot of hills in there. And then we went across the street on camera on Magnolia Hills Road there. I think you'll like that section. We got some dogs in there that are pretty interesting. Then we came back on 1488 and we, we, that whole stretch is on film. We didn't go as far as we usually do because uh, had some other commitments early earlier in the day. And so we wanted to kind of get back on time for that. But I think you would love the clips we got for you. We're on Flint Ridge Drive, headed north in the Woodlands, Texas. This road takes us up to Woodlands Parkway. And uh, that's where we're going to come across <laughs> Maurizio Topotopini. Uh. We were not planning on meeting anybody, but we see him and then he mentions to us that he was gonna go to the Ash Lane YMCA to see if any other riders were there. The forecast said rain, 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 and more rain and thunderstorms in the afternoon. So I'm wearing my rain gilet. Um, Paul has his rain gilet on. We've got the mud guards on. We've got our shoe covers on. I've got the Asas winter booties on. And we're going up now our plan today was in the, originally to go into the forest and kind of just visit the area we ended up changing it up because i decided to take paul to an area that he hadn't been to before called magnolia hills we also visited an area he had seen before that has a lot of climbs called karen we should probably saw on the on the route map if you if, you know if you notice an area called karen a lot of climbs but what ended up happening is we come across Mo and we ride with him to the Ashland YMCA and then we stay with him probably about, I would say, eight kilometers, maybe five miles. So he's riding at like my uh, sweet spot effort, you know, sitting on his wheel. That's where I was, you know, just like maybe a zone above where we're riding now, something like that. But it ended up just being at a pace where you can't really conversate. You know, it's not super hard, but it's it's hard, you know. You 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 can have short conversations, you can't really chat freely. It's not zone two pace. And more ended up doing some kind of ridiculous time on this this day. He did like four hours and forty-five minutes in rolling terrain. He did a hundred miles, about hundred and sixty-two kilometers. I'm rounding up. So that's about 22 miles an hour, something like that, just fast. So we weren't planning on doing that today. We planned on catching up. You know, during the week, everybody's busy. You know, we get a time to chat. Is that Mo? Right there, I thought it was Mo. I said, that's not Mo, but it ends up being Mo. I didn't recognize his Gile. <laughs> I, I say, oh, it's Mo. Let's turn, let's turn with him. Okay, we got to turn with you. So he said he's going to go check. Ashland YMCA is yeah. to the left. Uh, this is Woodlands Parkway Drive. Light. Boom, boom. Yeah. To the left. <laughs> Moore has the Dash, I think the Dash 600. I did a review on the channel. Very effective front light. That's what you see. So there was a car in the left turn. So we turned from the right lane, just went to, I'm just going to go to the shoulder. 
I'm gonna stay on the shoulder thinking I was thinking maybe there'll be some spray from Moe's wheel but no the, the, the ended up being the road is damp but there's no water on there or anything and then he's gonna lift to his pace you know our, this is our pace we're doing about 18 miles an hour he's gonna lift it to like 23 to 25 and so I lift my pace here just just spin up I just spin up to him you can see my RPMs, triple digits. And then in a little bit, I'm going to get on the road. But we're going to the Ashland YMCA to see if there are riders there. It's about, let's see, 726. By the time we get there, we'll get there in about two minutes. It'll be 728. We'll swing around. We don't see anybody. Then we head out. And then we initially said, you know, more as what you guys doing. We're planning on doing Honey Egypt going up. And I'm kind of glad we changed it because we ended up going to a very interesting area today that you guys will love. We got films of the dogs. They all got different attitudes. And even the, the cow that we came across, you know. So what we're talking about here is I told Mo I noticed that he's got a new cassette. Then he explained to me that after maybe after several changes of his chain, he'll go ahead and put a new cassette on. He said three three changes for a new cassette he said because he changed the chain and then it was skipping during the week so he just switched it he rides a lot so you know things work so he said once a year he'll change the chain something like that i think that's what he meant but he said every three changes in the chain he'll put a cassette so maybe he's doing three changes in the chain a year and then he'll switch a cassette once a year or something like that I usually just change my chain. I check them frequently, and I change my chain when it's 0.5 worn, which means it's not excessively worn. I change it to prevent it from wearing my cogs, and that has worked for me over the years. Because I just know that the cassette was clean, it was brand new. Not that his cassette's usually dirty, but you could tell a new cassette, new cassette, new chain. So you got to keep up with your stuff because this bike, the bike will take you far away from home. You don't want surprises. So, you know, you got to keep up with stuff. Mo does it's his own 728. repairs. 728. 728. Yep. Wait a little bit. So we're going to go right as a wait a little bit. We're going to go right. They park where he's going is where they park. It's the backside of the lot. But I don't think anybody's going to be here. You know, they forecast that it was going to rain the whole day. I had told Paul, yeah, only die high riders will be out here. So the only person we saw was Mo the whole day. On the way back, we saw some riders once we got back into the woodlands, but by then it had cleared up a bit. Yeah, he usually wears a blue G lid that fits him better. You hear him in a little bit say, well, when you're riding by yourself, you don't need to look good. He said he got that from a ride. He did triple bypass in Colorado. Yeah, he's got a blue and white G-Lay. It fits him really well. And he's yeah, it's got pockets. And pockets. And that, that's a good point because I love the G-Lays that have pockets because then you don't have to unzip them to get under there. You guys saw earlier I was sitting up and zipping up my G-Lay. I had to unzip the lower zipper to get the camera out. We wanted to go home in Egypt, but we can do fish break. No, whatever, whatever you was playing. So we were telling him we want to do a honey in Egypt, but then we end up changing because once we start to ride with Mo, I realized that mm, we had planned to chat more today because we didn't expect to meet anybody, let alone Mo, you know, and, and we didn't want to change his pace. We didn't want him slowing down for us, for what we wanted to do today. I'm much rather ride up to his pace than have him slow down to our pace. So a lot of times with the group when there's a lot of riders Mo will, will do his attacks during the ride at different stages then he'll either sit up or ride back to the group but then the group keeps going so there's no big deal there <laughs> i'm telling pause they want Mo say he's taking it easy 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about. Mike, Mike was telling riders last week, let Mo go, let Mo go. They want to chase him. He can't, he can't go with every effort. If you're feeling good, fine. But you got to pay the price. If it's a long ride, you, you go too hard early, you hit what Mo calls the Chinese wall. You hear him talk about being a cyclist. They say if you're a cyclist and you're proud and you don't like to be dropped, you chose the wrong sport because every cyclist worth the salt has been dropped at one point or another for whatever reason. Either they didn't choose to do the pace, they're not feeling good, bad legs, low morale, not your favorite terrain, you know, whatever. Nobody cares what the reason is. I've talked about it a long time ago on this channel. What What is important is that you know why you got dropped. If you know why, then it's not an issue. But if you're not learning from it, then you're you're in the same situation repeatedly. So you gotta know what's going on. You know, I, I rode with more than them that several went that, that Wednesday ride, those of you who saw the film, and from that ride I went to try to figure out why was I feeling so bad? Why was everything feeling so hard? I couldn't really explain it other than maybe the fact that I just had bad legs that day and so what did I do? I replicated those efforts in training. And, you, and so today, he does the same thing and everything felt so much better and more tolerable, even though there's just the three of us. Yeah, he's talking about Betio. Betio is taking part in the, I think his name is Alberto Betio. He rides for the EF team. He's in the, 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 the tour down under. And he threw a bottle at, spe at the spectators of Moa saying he was cramping on a hill and he didn't want to be filmed. And the spectator was videotaping him, so he didn't like it. And so he said, oh, I called the rules, he should have been disqualified. He said, but then the next day he took second. So the, the premise of that was, you never know how the body's going to feel. And that's why you shouldn't be stressed out or worried about, oh, I got dropped. Nobody cares understanding why is more important if you're just not going good you're not going good that's okay you accept it and you move on you had a bad day everybody's had a bad day you may have stuff going on with your body and you you feel normal but it's using that energy to help you fight something else and you can't put power to the pedals that can happen there are a lot of things that can go on with the human body you know so so on this ride i felt really really good i'm sitting on his wheel uh, right at, at, at sweet spot and I was like man this is nice but I did not want to go this fast on this day so that's why we end up letting him go but everything felt like it should have felt that on that ride several Wednesdays ago maybe about three weeks ago however long it's been so my body was back to its usual stuff I think it was because I just had heavy legs on that day. That was it. And plus, I have been doing a lot more jumps. See how I'm on this wheel here in this corner? So even though I'm doing 500 watts, I'm seated because I'm in the right gear. Look at my cadence. So I've been just putting my mind back to training like I used to do when I competed. It's a different kind of riding. And we're going to start doing that more, just keeping our pace up out of corners and getting used to that so that when we hook up with these guys, it's not a big change. So for us, it was fine. We just wanted to, a ride where we could chat and catch up and you will see. And then at the end of our ride, we once again rode like this. We kept the effort in the same zone to finish our ride. So sometimes you have to let the group go or let another rider go so that you can stick to your plan for that day. So since it was raining, we we're not doing a group ride because most of the riders in the area don't have mud guards and we don't like to do group rides when it's wet because you just get dirty. So we posted on our board for our ride that Paul and I were just going to slap on the mud guards and head out, meaning there was no group ride today. If you, know, if you don't have mud guards, <laughs> we're, we, so we didn't even stop at our group start point for the Velo Harmony ride today. So running into Mo was just an off chance. So we, we sit on him here and it's fine, it feels good. I felt really, really good. And it was nice to be able to sit on his wheel and say, oh, okay, this doesn't feel like 190, you know, like the, that day it felt like 
200 beats per minute. <laughs> you know, I can look around. I could, you know, it was just nice. You can see me soft pedaling. When he slows down, I stay really close. Mo, Mo gets very aerodynamic when he's going really fast. And so you have to stay close. So we're doing almost 24 miles an hour into the wind. This is Branch Crossing Drive, we just passed Taramount Park. So when we get to Research Forest, we're gonna back off and do about 18 to 20 miles an hour. He's gonna keep riding, then he'll wait and I'll just tell him, he'll wait up to Egypt Lane. I'll tell him, man, go ahead and just go. We don't wanna slow you down. Cause we wanna do, we wanna do a different kind of ride today. Go so we'll catch up, shoot the breeze and do some exploration. The road's going up. You see my cadence coming down? I probably will shift down one cog. Because I know, you know, most not going to back off that much. So I stay close to 90. See the speed, the speed goes down maybe one mile per hour, about two kilometers an hour. So we're doing about 20 miles an hour and the, the, the light changes to red, so we back off here. This is Alden Bridge Drive. If you go east to the right, that will take you to where we start our rides at the Alden Village Center. Alden Bridge Vill Village Center. It's about probably three kilometers to the right I had trouble with my cleats on clipping this morning <laughs> and we're on a hill and that sucker wouldn't come off I had to yank my foot out because if it hadn't I would have turned right because if your cleats get stuck it can cause you to fall so make sure you unclip early enough before you you have to stop and if that happens and it doesn't come out try to roll your bike a little bit until you can get it to come out so you don't fall it helps to, to practice doing track stands sometimes. But sometimes they stick. And then that means you need to check the tension on the pedals. If the tension is too high, it can cause them to be difficult to disengage. Because you don't need high tension to remain properly clipped in. So we're, we're going to be approaching uh, Branch Crossing in about a kilometer. So I can tell that my body is in a, a better way on this ride because my heart rate goes 163, 158, whatever. It, that's the way my body's supposed to be. Whereas on the other ride that day, it just my heart rate just stayed high and everything felt harder than what was displayed. So, so it was just that uh, I think it was just one of those days. I just had to suffer that day. So this felt so much better. But, you know, there are times when you, you should go hard, meaning that if you're in the mood. And I've talked to Jerry Lutner. If you, Jerry, Jerry's one of the guys that rides a lot of miles in the area. And he says that most of his rides are slow. So that when it's time to go hard, he's pumped. And he looks forward to it. And that's what this is about. Don't go harder than you plan all the time because then you would get sick of going hard. So today we didn't plan to go hard. So right here, you hear me tell Paul, this should slow him down. It will cause him to slow down because a lot of times when he does his efforts, he'll slow down for the group. And so I'm going to hold it right around 18 miles an hour. The wind's blowing. Oh, and I said, well, maybe he'll slow down. But then I, I watch his body language and he, he wants to ride hard. Mo hasn't been riding his usual schedule the last few weeks. I think he's, you know, he tries to maintain a certain level of activity because he loves riding his bike. And I can tell, I thought, you know, maybe he just wants to go hard today. So in a few kilometers, I'll tell him, you know, man, just go ahead and go, we'll, we'll, we'll see you another time. 
and don't let us slow you down. Because then, then he would say, yeah, you know, I prefer the company, but yeah, basically what he means is I prefer the company, but if you guys don't want to go harder, then, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and go. That's pretty much what I got from him. And I, that's what he meant. Because he's not going very hard, but it's faster than we want to go today. You know, we could sit in, but then that would change the nature of our ride that we hit that we had planned for this day. So I let the I let him maintain that gap. He's sitting there, he's soft pedaling. I told Pa, I said, this is the only way he would slow down if we just hold like the group pace, because this is normal. Like when Mo is riding with a lot of riders, he'll make an effort, he'll be up in a distance. When he finishes the effort, let's say usually it's a hill or whatever, if somebody goes with him, the two of them would sit up. If it's just him, he might make a U-turn and come back to the group. He does that a lot. And so, once we get to Egypt lane, I'm like, you know what, just go ahead and go, man. This is not, you know, this is not what we wanted to do. I told him, yeah, don't let us slow you down. And then on the way back, we go ahead and hold the same effort he was holding on 1488 coming back. Because that's when we were in the mood to go hard. But he ends up doing a very fast ride on this day. I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, he did 100 miles in 4 hours and 45 minutes in rolling terrain between 2 to 5% average gradient. Because he went and did Bethel. So I just dropped it to middle of zone 2. Behind him I was in sweet spot, top of zone 3, moving into zone 4. That fine line, it's threshold training. That's really, really good, good training anyway. So it was very tolerable. Just didn't want to do it on this ride. So we can see him. He's turning in a the corner there. We're going to turn. Then he'll wait. Then that's when I'll let him know. Just go ahead and go. Because I don't want, we don't want him to just change what he wanted to do. He went to Ashland to see if anybody would show up for his group ride because that's where they leave from. But with the weather like that, cold and wet, a lot of riders are not um, equipped to deal with that. Cold and wet, you want to be dry. That's not when you want your bum to be wet because you don't have mud guards or whatever. So Mo wanted to go quickly and come back. The rain was supposed to come around 10. We don't want to slow you down, man. You got to keep going. He said, too fast, too fast. I say, yeah, a little fast. <laughs> it was faster than we want to go today. You know, it wasn't too fast. It wasn't too bad. But that's not what we want to do. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah, just keep going, man. Keep going. We'll see you, we'll see you later. And we're riding the company, but, you know. All right. Yeah, so he's riding the company, but if we're not going to ride faster, then he wants to go and get it over with because the rain's supposed to come at 10 a.m. It didn't come. But knowing Mo, he probably left home like six, and he was gonna, gonna do, do his hours and get back. What a roll called Magnolia, Mag I think Magnolia Mills or Magnolia this Hills? This is what we wanted to do I today. It's, I think it's Magnolia Mills. Magnolia, Magnolia Hills, Hills, Hills is an area I've been to before. We wanna film this little area, show you guys where, it's a little cold. We uh, we ended up letting Mo go because he was just flying, so we didn't want to slow him down. And we had a different kind of ride planned, so. We're about mid ride. We're gonna be turning around soon, heading back. Had a couple of how to flat glass worked his way in the tire. When it's wet, that's one of the hazards. It sticks to the rubber more. Worked his way in. It was a slow leak, but we basically caught it before the air was completely out. So it was easy to just flick the glass out of there. We didn't have to do much searching. But this is a really quiet area here. So we wanted to share with you guys. The rain has been on and off, kind of spotty. The roads are damp, but it's just nice. It's right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 Celsius. Very, very nice, cool. And with the moisture, probably feels like 45. I'm wearing uh, my neoprene gloves. Hopefully you can see that. 
and that's just perfect for this weather. Look at that horse. Look at that horse. <laughs> He's just chilling. <laughs> <laughs> this lake, uh, it's a little lower than it normally is. Last time I came, it was really high up. See the ducks in I haven't in been on this side, my brother. I know. I filmed it one day okay. when I came out here on a ride. You weren't with me. It was a Sunday or something. Okay. And it's, uh, I filmed the ride. You hadn't been here. I know. That's why I said you'd like it. We pass it all the time on that highway. We never turn it. This is the ride where that those guys were riding raw. Remember? Yeah. That's the road that you guys passed when he had that flat. Yeah, he had that flat. Out exactly. There. We just never come in here. Well, we're talking about some riders yes. that visited Velo Harmony from all California the many years ago. I one day. I came here by myself and I did a ride for the channel. This is a good horse to ride. Yeah, look at this. Smooth pavement. No cars, you know. There's no reason to come back here unless you live here because it dead ends. And Doesn't all the dogs anywhere. are fenced. Yeah, there must be an ordinance in this neighborhood. Back, Everybody has fences with chicken wire. Single family residence. you see the wood, there's chicken wire that the dogs cannot see, get these through. these guys don't rush around fighting over the yard. The leaves fall, they leave it. Where we live, everybody wants to see grass all year. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. something wrong with leaves. Yeah, my neighbors throw my money yard. away the during the winter. Sitting. Got people yeah, cutting grass dead grass. Anyway. When the grass wakes up in the summer, they'll be gone. Because in, in spring, I mulch. That wakes up the grass. Look at that. The fountain was a little more robust. I didn't even get to see the leaves in the Yeah. Yeah, I, I, le I leave my leaves fall. alone. When, the, when my trees fall, the leaves fall, I leave them alone. I blow them off the street back Check onto the yard. Out. I don't, What's I'm not in a hurry to clear them up. <laughs> Those are dogs. Uh, there's a dog on. down the street. How you doing? That's a big boy. Look, look at that. Yeah, this is the guy. That's a big boy. I gotta he get looks like he's out of shape. Look at it. <laughs> Man. Look at it. It's a German Shepherd. I'll give yourself a coronary, boy. Well, you can hear <laughs> him breathing. You know how to get out more. <laughs> he's out of shape. Oh, man, he's lumbering. <laughs> I hope the camera does him justice. Look, Look at, at him. him. He favors wow, his paw, his, his right wow, paw, wow, I think. He's a big boy. <laughs> you can tell that at one yeah, point he, he was fast, but he's been sitting around <laughs> watching too many sitcoms. <laughs> <laughs> big boy, he's tired. He's tired. You can man. hear him breathing. You gotta, you gotta work out, man. <laughs> Check out these other guys. Yeah, they're all in the same yard. The yard ends here. You can hear him breathing. Yeah, he's breathing. Yeah, hard. you can hear him breathing. I mean, man. he was out of shape. I hope the camera got that guy because that dog looked like he was struggling. <laughs> Boy's out of shape. He was yeah, he's out of shape. He's too, he's put on some weight. Yeah, he he, he put us. He been sitting on the couch watching a, a, a go to eye on television get, get or something, maybe there. Criminal Minds or Pet <laughs> TV <laughs> or whatever it is. Uh, he been on the iPad Beautiful. or something. He needs to get out. Look at Mr. Squirrel. <laughs> he just darted across over there. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that bunch of them. It's like a family of squirrels. Yeah, the camera didn't pick them up. It was like three or four squirrels just zipped across the road. They usually don't so cross these are the at areas once. You want to come out and get your workout, and it's quiet. It's not busy, you know. Plus, you get to check out areas you wouldn't have any reason to go to in your car. Yeah, these are the kind of areas I come I've and do my little attacks, on you know, sprints on the hill and stuff like that. There are no cars. In a car. Yeah. I think this is a kennel. I think they're bored dogs or something. Yeah, that house. They have a I sign there. a sign over there. So we just wanted to get that clip to uh, show you guys some of the roads that we check out on these rides. More to come. Yeah. This one dead end, so we're gonna flip. All right, you legends. This is what we're to leaving. Turn the camera back on, cause we took another way. We did not exit that uh, neighborhood the way I had done in the past. We, we did a U-turn and, and ended went up past that aggressive dog, the extensive. German Shepherd. So, so we're, we're southwest of his and house. Dogs, now we're going to be passing him again. In. All the dogs are fenced in, but they're just rambunctious. Over here, there's a donkey look like, almost, well, not quite like the guy in Shrek. He's behind <laughs> that tree over there. He was moving. 
Field dogs so we're going back towards that German Shepherd's house. All the dogs in a little, are fenced in. He's probably What's about up, a boys? mile away. Morning. What you guys working on? What's going on? <laughs> So these guys got like dogs, donkey, horses. I see a cow. Looks like a long, like a big horn. You see that? Yeah, there's a yeah, cow here with an attitude. He's gonna come yeah, he, to the he fence. He must know we're talking about him because all of a sudden he's looking at us like we borrowed money from him. Look at him. <laughs> right there. He's looking right at us. He's different. Look, Look at him. He's coming, coming to the fence. What's up, boy? <laughs> Mike Barrera would like that. He's looking right at us. Who is this guy? Look at this. It's like a wild hog. Yeah, there's a hog, right but you there? can't really see yeah. him. He's That's behind a pig. the fence. Yeah. He's a big pig. You can't see. He's gray. He's just all blended That's the in dog there. That's the dog with the cough that needs Ricola. That's a dog up there. <laughs> we had we come by, by that way. I turned the camera on. We're going back the way we came because the dead ends back there. This dog is horse. <laughs> he needs some cough drops or something. <laughs> What's up, boy? You sound like you have a cold. <laughs> like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Morning. There he is. He's skipping along. The other guy's quiet. Look at What's up, boy? That's a big boy. He's a big boy. <laughs> See you later. He's, uh, they got a big yard. You got enough place to play. You need to run around. Now there's another dog. Uh, you, if you saw the earlier clip, he lives up at, along the way there. He looks like he's about ripe for a coronary. He needs to work out because he's out of breath. <laughs> and he's very aggressive. He's like a, he looks like a German Shepherd. All the dogs out here must not get a whole lot of people coming through here on bikes because they're just all excited. The guys on the left that you hear. Ramp, Linda Ramp, the bikes. Oh, okay. Have a yeah, Paul said it built a ramp in oh, the no, yard boys. for bikes. Morning. <laughs> That's a little country dog there. <laughs> All these little mutts <laughs> getting all excited. They don't get a whole lot of action in this area. There's more of them coming. He needs to work out. Yeah, he's gonna. He leads the pack. What's up, boy? That's the big oh. dog we passed earlier. Look at him. He's out of shape. Look at him. <laughs> he's trying to race me. I'm not even pedaling. Oh my goodness. The road is slightly downhill, but he can't keep up. He's just Actually, he's out of shape. He likes to work out. In his mind, he thinks he he's fast. He likes to work out, but he's His yard ends over there. <laughs> He looked like he ready to have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think he's too heavy. They need to get him to But work. if he's loving running, how is he getting all that way? <laughs> That's what I said. I he loves he running, running, but I don't think he gets to work out. Yep. About yeah. Back man, Everybody yeah. Everybody's in cars. He ain't chasing no cars. He's under and needs to take him out running, man. Yeah, I need to take him out, throw some balls or throw a stick, let him go get it, because his right leg yep. looks like he can't put weight on. Yep. He's favoring he his right up, front his leg. Yep. You don't start Dogs get out of shape just like people. <laughs> He's working, man. We got him work today. In his mind, he remembers his glory days. <laughs> well, he never quit. I thought they might can outrun you by foot. <laughs> Paul said, I can outrun your foot. <laughs> yeah, man, I came through here a long time ago. Yeah. I've been a year ago. Yeah, my brother, this is very nice. The other side, no more interesting stuff on the other side. Those dogs. The lumberjack. Yep. I'll call him the lumber dog. <laughs> Lumbering down. Big boy. Like a little, like a running back. So we're leaving Magnolia Hills Drive. We're going to turn south towards Magnolia, Texas. Yeah. This is 149. We yeah. usually zip right past that neighborhood in Let's both directions here, and we we'll rarely go in there. Yep. So 
after our exploration, we had gone into Karen also, and we decided, okay, now we're in the mood to lift the pace and close out the ride. So this is southbound on Highway 149 towards the uh, area called oh, Mount Magnolia. Yeah. <laughs> I said, let's pull up Mauricio <laughs> to put the pini. Let's, let's do a mo. So we're going to oh, get up, okay. get the pace up. More rides at one speed, warp speed. So we carry multiple tubes on every ride because like when we're replacing my tube, the tubes can be fragile, you know, even the bead of the tire can put a hole in it if you got a wire bead or whatever you have. I'm using my heavy winter tires here and still literally I could feel it getting cushy. When we stopped, you could hear the air coming out. So we were able to find the glass easily and flick it off the tire. But that's, that's the thing about in the wet. When the tire's wet and you go across glass, it can work its way in. That's what it did on the rear. So since we've been like just visiting the area or whatever, I'm waking up my legs by going, just increase the cadence to settle into some kind of a rhythm here. You want to be able to, to do a very high cadence for a long period of time you need to focus first of all on your bike fit meaning the saddle your contact with your feet and your bars so you can relax your torso but you've got to do drills so that you can acclimate and be able to sustain high cadences when necessary you don't need to ride like that all the time, but you need to be able to do that when you need to, because that's what gives you the ability to close gaps and save your legs under repeats. This is a slight grade. It may not register, but it's kind of a drag. You can even see it, it goes up. They may flick the 1% in a bit. We're getting close to Mount Magnolia. I make myself drink even when it's a cool day because you need to get some water in your system. It's good for your body. But even if I'm not thirsty, I still drink. So all I focus on, as I usually do, is reading the road. I'm trying to avoid rocks, gravel, because that's where pieces of glass will sit. I try to stay on the cleanest pieces of pavement by using my hips as I track the bike.
We have a lot of wind coming from the right, the west, which is on our right. Yeah. Yeah, the down looks pretty good. Yeah, we use that little pump to pump up that tire. They claim in the right up that, oh, you can get up to 160 PSI. As the British says, bullocks. As we say, BS. <laughs> I was lucky if I could get 80 PSI in there. Your arms not only get tired, after a while it just doesn't take any more air. The pump is, the shaft is too short to put that kind of, you know. So I've got probably 80 PSI in there. It feels good, you know, it's nice and hard, but. I'm about to push things like those on this road because this is the main road. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about a little pedestrian signal on the right. Plus, we got a car there. It's a busy yeah, road. The, the light favors this road, so I don't bother going all the way to the pole. Pushing until there is a pole on the right that sometimes we'll go to to push the <laughs> pedestrian cross uh, signal yeah, to get nice. the light to change. Oh, yeah, I, I was pumping up the tire. My arms would get tired. I let it rest and then go back. I got to the point where it simply was not able to put any more air in there. And then I knew, okay. It's hard enough, feels good. That's why you don't need 120 PSI in your tire. I'm riding on 80-ish and it feels great. So normally I'll do 90 to 95, that's it. You can enjoy the suppleness of the tire. So we have to go west here to loop around and go on that overpass to go back towards town. The overpass was built exclusively to direct traffic above the train tracks that are near the high school. So when your bike is not set up properly, if you have not gotten a proper fit, a lot of riders like to do their own thing, you're not going to notice it until you start getting aches and pains from being on the bike too long, or you hook up with a group that's riding harder than you're comfortable with, or what's gonna happen, your hands might get dumb, or a pain in your knee, or whatever. Those are symptoms caused by other things. So your hands getting numb does not mean it's necessarily your bar setup. It could be, your foot or your saddle. And so your arms and your hand are trying to unweight an uncomfortable part of your body. So it is in your interest, if you're having challenges, to get professional help from a good bike fitter. You just end up enjoying the bike. I have zero discomfort on my machine. And I make sure my saddle position is marked so if it ever slips for any reason, I'll know immediately visually. So we're going towards town. This is the opposite direction on Mount Magnolia. This is not as steep as the other side, which makes sense because this side was already high. You can see it. They didn't have to go as high to clear the railroad tracks. Wind is blowing from the left and from behind. In a little bit, we're going to switch the camera. Paul's going to take the lead. We're going to try to use the slight tailwind from the west. 
countering that crosswind from the north on our left to get us back home with a reasonable amount of effort. They've uh, built shopping centers on the side of this road, so they've used up our shoulder for right turn lanes after this exchange here, this interchange. This is a shoulder, and as soon as we get past the end of it, this shoulder becomes a right turn lane into the shopping center. I'm gonna get in that right turn lane because that's what you want to do because you don't want them turning right in front of you. So once I see it marked only right, I'll move back over because that means that the, the shoulder is going to get narrower. You see that? So you want to be here so that it can get behind you. You want to force them to stay behind you if, if it were busy. So we stay in the right turn lane because I'm using it like a shoulder. This road is like, it's called Spur, Spur 149. It's like a, an offshoot of 149 that we're on. The one on the right that we're going by. bike doesn't fit you you can cheat by using lower cadences but where it really shows up is when you have to really really increase your effort or your cadence you're not able to you start rocking and everything is uncomfortable and things hurt when your bike doesn't fit you you go and do a hard ride that's the first time you find out like man something's wrong So each ride you do should have a purpose. Before you even leave home, you should know what kind of effort you want to mostly maintain for that ride. If you are supposed to rest that day, avoid going hard, because you will just hamper your ability to recover enough to where when it's time for you to go hard, you may, you may be a little tired. I'm trying to find the drive. The wind's blustery, so you see how, how it's quiet right here? That's where it is at this moment of course the road is going to curve so i'm always looking for the draft so when you plan to ride easily it's probably best to just ride by yourself either on your trainer or just go for a short ride near the, on the roads near where you live because it's hard to do an easy ride with a group there's always someone who wants to go harder. And you can't really control the pace that much. You kind of have to let them go if you want to stay disciplined. So we had already decided to close out the ride. We like to close out our rides with hard efforts. Because when you've been out for hours, at the end of the ride, it's really the best time to push yourself. Because when you compete, is the end of the race that's hard. So you gotta teach your body to go hard when you're not fresh. So Paul's got a good pace going here. And I'm just focusing on staying in the draft.
Take a look at curve back there. Nice straight now. We headed east. So this seems to be the best spot right now to get a good draft. Just a little to the left of his wheel. This road is very deceiving. Besides being exposed, it's not particularly flat the whole way. So right here, we're coming to a slight grade. You can see the light in the distance, that intersection, before we get there, the road kicks up. Yeah, right here, it says 1%. You feel it more than anything on this road. You don't really see it, except at these points, like at the intersection, you, you can see that it's a mound, a bit of a bump. So I'm not drafting really tightly on purpose because I want to keep my effort high even when I'm in the back. I'm trying to keep my effort right at zone two. I don't want it to drop too low. So I just stay back about a bike length. You see how Paul is staying smooth even in the drops? When your bike fits you properly, you should be able to generate power from all positions. If you can't, that means something's off with your fit. I think I hand Paul the camera here and then you'll see him try, he, he stopped in the wrong gear so he's going to shift while he's stationary and pick up the bike and get it in gear. So I see him do that so I'm going to wait for him. I'm going to look back to see if he's got it together and now we can go. So you can see my effort is the same that it was when I was behind Paul because I wasn't drafting him very closely. So I'm already used to this effort. So when I get to the front, I just hold the same effort. 
That way he gets a chance to catch his breath. Because he pulled for a long while. I'm trying to fold my upper body a little bit, get more arrow, because the wind is just whipping around. You can hear it. We're doing about 25 miles an hour right now. It's pretty much a flat road here, this section. So I just settled into a rhythm. In a little bit, you'll see my cadence drop into the 80s because it feels like a long hill climb with all this wind. And I'm probably going to shift. I think I am riding a 5316 right now. That's the gear I'm in. Knowing that the wind is coming from the left mostly, I stay close to the wide line. If it were in the summer where well, the wind would be coming from the right, we would use more of the right side of this shoulder. You he can hear it. And Paul has found the draft on the left corner here for some reason. So even though it's blowing from the left, it seems to be swirling around to the point where this is a grade. You can see I'm putting more power. I did not downshift. I stayed in the same gear. I just muscled it. made my legs do the work here. This is close to the same effort that we were doing when we were riding with more earlier. So when you ride with people and you keep the effort steady, they get a chance to recover. So when it's time for them to come around, they can contribute more to the group. The reason why road racers jump and do those kind of attacks is because it takes a lot more out of you when you're accelerating all the time. It's the same thing with your car. If you accelerate and race from stop sign to stop sign, you burn more gas than when you're cruising. Simply just the laws of physics. It takes more effort to get that thing going like that. So it is more efficient to cruise. That's what I was talking about. You see my cadence in the 80s. The wind is swirling around. It feels like I'm doing a long climb. So I keep it in a slightly larger gear than I would if I were following a group that had a lot of speed changes. So I'm using the 5316 and the 5317. I'm probably in the 17 at this point. And that position is a nice, comfortable position. I've got my arms parallel to the bars. at 90 degrees to the bars, parallel to the road. F 
theoretically, I think it's been proven in a wind tunnel that that position is more aerodynamic than being in the drops because in the drops, your arms are kind of at a 45 degree angle and maybe they catch more wind. The wind doesn't slice around as easily. But I use the drops when I need more control. Here, I'm really just cruising. And since I'm leading, I don't have to be concerned about a rider in front of me doing anything. focus on keeping my upper body relaxed so that my legs can use all my energy to keep the bike going forward. It's yellow, we go ahead and go through it as it changes to red. That's Cimarron Boulevard. This section here kicks up. rhythm going we just maintain it level off and go slightly downhill. You can see the watts dropping. Approaching the intersection in about a kilometer or so, the 2978 and 1488, the area called Egypt, Texas.
So it really didn't warm up that much. Uh, it's probably 52 degrees Fahrenheit. It stayed cool the entire day. We didn't get the rain that was forecasted, so it was a good thing that we got out. So I don't know what you did this weekend, but this is part of what we did on Saturday. Remember, get your K's in and keep the doctors fire. Just put our heads down and keep riding. Same as the world with more.